Hello everybody, Skip Allen here, uh, Corel Painter Master Elite, and today I'm going to demonstrate three brush variants that use dab stencil technology. There are also particle brushes, and I'm going to start with a brush called Paper Digital Watercolor, which can be found in the dab stencil uh, category. Now on the can on the image here, I have a canvas layer with nothing on it. I have a layer two that has these colored squares on it. And I have a layer one that is um, creating the illusion of paper um, so that you, you look like you're working directly on paper and you can actually see the nab, uh, nabby paper itself. Okay. So what I want to do is I've switched to the paper digital watercolor. I want to have my paper set at nabby paper. And if I paint heavily, I'm going to get the green color. If I paint lightly, it's going to take away some of that color and begin to give me kind of a transparent area. If I paint over the same color, it's not really picking the color up or doing anything to it. It's just kind of coating it with a transparent look. However, if I add a new layer, now before I go to the new layer, notice that this was a default composite method. So I'm going to add a new layer, and the minute I touch that new layer with the stylus, it's going to change from default to gel. See there? So what's going to happen now is I'm going to get my green, and as I lighten my touch, it's going to get uh, even more transparent. So I can work over these colors and get kind of an optical illusion of the green and yellow together. But it's, it's, it's still not quite what we want. So if we then add a new layer and we paint, Again, it's almost identical to what we had before, but if we activate, pick up underlying color, and I paint lightly, now I'm going to get this uh, blending of that yellow, pulling the yellow out or pulling the blue out from that color or the red out from that color. And I could actually pull the blue into the yellow and get a green. Or I could pull the blue into the red and we get a purple. Or I could take the brush and press hard, adding green, and go into blue or green into yellow or green into red. Okay, the other part of this brush is that it is a dab stencil brush set to paper. So it will respond very much to paper. If I change from this nabby laid paper to window frost, see you begin to see the, t the paper. Okay, so be aware of how versatile these brushes can be and that they do utilize dab stencils, which give you, gives you the ability to show the paper grain, the texture of a flow map, or a texture. Now, I've added a new layer, and um, no, I haven't. I need to delete that layer and add a new layer. And I want to turn off Pick Up Underlying Color, and I'm going to switch to Paper Sergeant. Now, I want to go back to the Navi Laid Paper, and if I paint, I'm going to get that sort of sergeant look that we're all familiar with. If I paint lightly, the chaos of the particle brush is going to go crazy and fly all over the place and give you these interesting textured kind of dots or, or look. Um, I don't know exactly what to call them, but uh, I, I, I think they're really pretty. <laughs> Okay, so if I switch to a different paper, because again, this is a dab stencil with source paper source, and I paint, I'm going to see how that paper 
changes the way the brush works and we begin to see that paper. Now, if you switch this to pick up underlying color, then it is definitely going to pick up the underlying color and smear these textures out. But look how pretty that is. So we've got that window frost. We're uh, grabbing some of the color and throwing it around. It's kind of a fun look. Okay, again, I'm going to delete that layer, add a new layer, and I'm going to switch to flow map texture. This particular dab stencil utilizes a flow map. And it also uh, utilizes texture. So it's going to be using this texture or whatever texture you select. And the flow map that is currently selected is uh, this coarse chipboard. <coughs> we don't have a flow map like that. It's a paper. And I just took the paper and created a flow map from it. Okay. So if we take that brush and we paint lightly, we're going to get, let me switch this back to the nabby paper. We're going to get that flow map that you see. And as you increase your pressure, you begin to pick up more and more of the texture until it looks exactly like the texture, except we've got this flow map over the top of it. Now this brush also is sensitive to paper. So if we select a paper that is has a lot of grain to it, then you're not only going to get the flow map uh, of that uh, cardboard or concrete, you're going to get the paper texture. So you're going to get a lot of stuff going on. We've still got pick up underlying color selected. So if I go over the color, see how that picks up the color and changes the way it works. I can still get the texture by pressing hard or by pressing lightly. It would pull up that color or don't use it. And as you go over it, you're just going to cover up like that. Okay. All right. So what we've done is we've got our uh, three brushes and we've looked at what they do. And what I'd like to do now is quickly um, open up a new canvas. And um, I want to uh, try to make a very fast uh, landscape that really the, the concept is that we're just going to sort of block in a landscape to get started. I'm going to start with my paper digital watercolor. I'm going to get a color that's kind of in the sky range. And uh, I'm uh, actually going to build the bring the size up of this brush a bit so that it works rather fast. Now I've got that uh, texture set, uh, the paper set to window frost. I don't want that. I want to go back to the navy laid paper. Okay, and as you can see, I'm getting this sort of gray look all over. And as I lighten my pressure, I get lighter color or darker color. And I just let that kind of flow. I'm going to take this brush back to its default setting and go from there. I'm going to change the color now to white. And I want to do that because that introduces so you can bring whatever color you want into the image. And I want to kind of get this cloud kind of feel up here. And if I wanted to add a little warmth to it, I could certainly do that by just putting in some of the warm colors and blend it in like that.
And I want to put some more white over here. Okay. So then I'm going to switch to um, the uh, sergeant brush. And I'm going to grab, uh, no, actually I'm not. I'm going to the flow map texture brush. I'm going to reduce the size of the brush to a smaller size. I'm going to stay with this uh, texture there. And I'm actually going to hold down the shift key. If I can find it. I think I've got it. And I'm just going to kind of come out like this and get myself a horizon line. And then I'm going to come in and just kind of give the impression of distant, maybe mountains. Remember, I, I'm using a dab a stencil and flow map is being used, which is that concrete. And once I get this started, I can get my, I can open my brush size a lot more. Uh, not that way. Let's come over here, grab that, get my brush a bit bigger. And I can begin to cover up a little bit more of this. land area and as you can see we kind of got maybe a bit of a river coming through okay and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to switch to the paper sergeant brush i'm going to bring in a sort of a gray light gray color Whoops, that was too big, so I want to take the size of the brush down smaller. And it's going to, I haven't changed off of this layer. That's a little bit too small. And so it's going to affect what's on the layer. It's going to smear it, so to speak. And it, because it's a little bit lighter in color, it will lighten the value back here some. Now I'm going to go over the top of this because that white back there actually looks kind of mountain-like. So I'm just going to play with it like it is a mountain. Like that. And I want to kind of mix up some of this color here. All right, so you can see we're beginning to get a uh, landscape sort of uh, color here. Um, now I'm going to go back to the paper digital watercolor and I'm going to come in with uh, the same sort of uh, light um, lavender and I'm going to put that color back here. See, and it just tends to color what's there. Okay. And I'm going to add a little bit more color there. I'm going to put in 
some sort of blue-green in places. Just a little bit here and there. Now I'm going to switch back to the texture brush and I'm going to make it larger back to its default setting and I'm going to drag in some of this color that we had before. And I think I'm going to close that off and make this kind of a, a lake. All right, so you get the idea here. We're beginning to create a quick landscape um, utilizing these three brushes. And then we could come back in and begin to clean up all of uh, this uh, stuff that we've got started. I hope this was helpful to you and that you'll enjoy those three brushes. Thank you very much and bye-bye.